Okay, so in the last video we introduced trigonometric functions in terms of ratios of side lengths for a right angled triangle, and that's typically where most people first learn about the trigonometric functions. Um, and, and of course these, these come up frequently, they're, they're useful in a lot of applications, um, used constantly in things like surveying, right? Um, but um, mathematically we tend to not really think so much in terms of triangles as we do in terms of circles, and in particular this unit circle. Um, now, so the unit circle is a set of all points in the xy plane uh, that have length or distance one from the origin, from zero, zero. Um, now, uh, thanks to the Pythagorean theorem, thanks to the distance formula, right, we know that our, our delta x is, is just x, our delta y is just y, we want d to be 1, and, and so we get a formula for this unit circle, right? So the unit circle is a set of all points in the plane satisfying this equation x squared plus y squared is equal to 1, okay? And this angle theta that we see here is the angle between this radius that I've drawn and the positive x-axis, okay? So Pencil that in, okay? So it's that angle. Now, um, you'll probably notice that, just like we had here, there is a right angled triangle hiding in this picture. If we drop this perpendicular down, all right? So there's a right angled triangle sitting there. This side has length x, this side has length y. And so if you, if you were Refer back to how we define sine cos tan in, in this context here, sine and cosine in particular, as these ratios of side lengths. Well then right away you can see that x is going to be, well x is the adjacent side, right? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just one. So x over one is cos theta. Y opposite over hypotenuse is sine theta, right? Now, you can think of those as consequences of the right angled triangle definition, but in fact, um, when we're doing calculus, um, we take these as definitions. So, so from the mathematical point of view, this is the definition for sine and cosine as functions, okay? As functions of this angle theta. Um, now, there's one thing that we have to, we have to add, okay? sort of an important thing. Um, theta, whenever we're doing calculus, theta must be measured in radians. So this is important. Um, you might be used to measuring angles in degrees, and degrees are convenient for certain things, um, surveying perhaps. Um, they're, they're nice when you're doing right-angled triangle trigonometry. But if you want to do calculus, you have to work in radians. Um, and, and one of the reasons that, that we want to work in radians is that if you work with radians, it means that you can treat theta as... Um, a real number. Now, um, why? It's still an angle. How do you get to treat theta as a real number? Well, the reason is that for any angle theta that you pick, there's going to be, starting here at the point 1, 0, there's going to be a little segment of the circle starting at 1, 0 and ending at this point, right? like so. Let's call that S, okay? So S is this little sort of segment, this arc, okay? So one of the basic uh, formulas that you have from sort of circle geometry 
is that as long as you're working in radians, that length s is just, it's the radius times the angle. So s is r times theta, okay? And because we're on the unit circle, r is just 1, okay? So s equals theta. So that means that every angle gets identified with a length. Lengths are measured in using real numbers. Um, so what that means is that these, these quantities here, sine theta, cos theta, which were, were given before as ratios of lengths, um, we can now treat them as, well, I mean, they, they were already always numbers. Uh, but theta was this, it was measured in degrees, right? So we don't, you know, when we're measuring theta in degrees or even in radians, we're thinking of it as an angle, not as a number, right? But this gives us an identification that every angle produces a number, right? And, and in terms of the quantity, they're equal. Um, so, so now we can think of these as functions. We can think of the sine and cosine as functions and functions of a real variable, just like we have exponential functions and logarithms and polynomial functions. These are now functions, functions of a real variable, so we can do calculus with them. That's kind of the, the, whole, the whole point of moving to the unit circle is now we have functions of a real variable, right? We think of theta as a real number. Um, we'll find later on once we get into doing calculus, once we start talking about limits, derivatives, things like that, um, if we want any of the, the formulas that we derive to work out, we definitely need to be working in radians. If you, if you work in degrees, you're going to be off by, by a factor of like pi over 180, something like that. Okay? Um, so it's essential that you, that you view theta as, as measured in radians. Um, the other kind of nice thing that happens now is there's a lot more freedom in terms of angles that you can choose. In fact, um, theta is going to be a real number, and, and, and we could in fact say it can be any real number. This is a surprising thing, right? If you're here working with a, with a right-angled triangle, um, then theta, if you're measuring in degrees, it's got to be somewhere between 0 and 90 degrees, right? It has to be, it has to be an acute angle in this context, right? Or if you're working in radians, somewhere between 0 and pi over 2, um, let's say. Okay, so, um, but now you can, you're not limited to acute angles, right? You can, you can let this point go anywhere on the circle, and so you can still define sine and cosine for points, right? So sort of your first quadrant angles, those are the ones that correspond to right-angled trig. But there's nothing stopping me from putting a point, let's say, out here, right? Drawing that line, my angle now goes around all the way around like that. That's my theta. But I still get a point on that circle. That point still has x and y coordinates. Um, they're in the, I'm in third quadrant now, so they're both negative. Um, but I can, still, I can still assign those values. Right? I can still figure out what the x coordinate is. That's still going to be cos theta. The y coordinate, that's still going to be sine theta. Right? And in fact, I, I can even go around more than once. I can go 10 times around the circle, right? That's going to define an angle. I can, I can figure out what cos of that angle and sine of that angle is. I can also go clockwise rather than counterclockwise. I can go the other way around the circle. I can get negative angles, right? Uh, so now you're, you have a lot more freedom in the sorts of angles that you can consider. You can still define sine and cosine um, for those angles, right? Now for any real number angle, not just for um, angles measured in degrees between 0 and 90.